face of Boxer. In Control is going to see everything going on. Sees the factory going down, the reactor on it. Starport's just completing up as well. And there is going to be a missile turret at uh, the natural, so he might just park that behind. But uh, what is In Control doing now? His upgrades uh, have been going on. He did get plus armor first, plus one armor first. Now working on plus one ground weapons. And again, Boxer continuing this theme of upgrade focused play did the small little push at the start and there we see the plus two attack is going to be coming right on the heels of plus one no medevacs out yet only just now about to pop far later than your usual terran player but boxer is not looking to harass his way into a win he's looking for a direct confrontation he's going to follow this up with ghosts and a third and in control unusually is going to be behind in upgrades yeah, and I mean, as far as the Ghosts are concerned, we've all seen just how absolutely devastating they can be versus these Protoss armies, especially when exceptional control is introduced. You know, we've seen Ghosts come out, okay, there's six of them just sitting there, and that looks like a really nasty little flight headed on over to In Control's base. We have two medevacs fully filled, three marauders, it looks like ten marines heading on over. That was uh, very similar to the force that attacked through the front. So this time in the back, note behind in this little shaded area has no pylons. So if he drops in that back area, um, major damage could be sustained. Third command center down for Boxer. The rocks have been knocked down, but the pylon is there to spot it. We do see a factory floating up to the north to check for the fourth base. And just as you said, Marcus, in control, filling in that vision gap, starting to become aware that Terran hasn't really done too much. So drops are becoming increasingly a problem. And great timing there by in control. We'll have that plus zealot leg speed done. But Boxer has a big drop with 1-0 infantry. And here we go. First probes getting taken out. Some zealots being warped in on both sides. He's also going to see the two additional gateways right here. Uh, force field will block some of those units from getting back into the medevacs. And he will actually escape with uh, a loss of two marauders. But we have another drop coming in from Boxer. He is just ripping apart the backdoor expansion. Boxer utilizing the fact that he knows how much damage he did at the start of the game. He knows in controls forces are spread thin. And at the back of the base, the redrop by Boxer. The nice micro, but Boxer's starting to lose these medevacs. He's got to be careful, but no, it looks like Boxer is able to overpower this force at the natural expansion. Back in the main, in control has cleaned up, but his natural is wide open. The sentries try to retreat, but Boxer picking off everything at this expo. 17 workers killed, Sean, and now he just continues to do damage here with this backdrop. He's going to try to get out of there, and he will manage to escape 50 hit points left on that medevac. Now up here, it looks like no units here for those medevacs, so he's not going to be able to keep up any drops and uh, some, still some coverage going on uh, around the base of Boxer by in control. He's got some decent placement here of his observers, and that third command center is moving over. In control has that pylon back there. It uh, is now spotted, and the army is going to move over to go ahead and take that out, make sure no warp-ins happen, and uh, no zealots go in there to rip up that mineral line. At this point, in control is forced into passivity. He needs to get some edge, likely expansions and upgrades, but as we see, in control just now finishes two armor. He does have two armor, one attack, but Boxer can now begin his plus three, plus two upgrades at his engineering bay and has a gigantic food lead. Ghosts coming out now. The barracks count is increasing. Boxer transitioning out of all these little damaging attacks very nicely. And yeah, the po uh, the food pop says a lot. 143.70 um, looks to be a, a killer, killer difference. And even more scary is just the amount of medevacs that Boxer has right now is yeah. uh, really, really nasty. Of course, making all these soldiers, super soldiers are there on the ground for the Terran army. And uh, he's just going to traverse around the base. He might actually go right past this DT uh, would uh -oh. get vision of it. He doesn't not uh, have vision of it currently. Now he does have the single missile turret at the front. Not sure he's got anything at the third. Looks like we will have one in the mineral line, but it's going to need some units to also take care of that as well. So Jeff is going to check the vision there with the DT and now make his way over. And oh no, oh. the army's moving out. And it looks like in control and box are actually just not going to see each other's forces at all. The Dark Templar does arrive clears out the watchtower, so now Boxer is at the very least aware of DT tech, but oh no! 
an uncharacteristic mistake by Boxer getting Combat Shield not until after 16 minutes we see some Dark Templar trying to warp into the high ground and Control's gonna be able to do some damage but oh no Slayer's Boxer missed the whole army moving out for in Control the third is vulnerable and we have some Zealots making their way over, and it looks like In Control wants to attack this third. It is going to be an immediate lift. He might be able to take out some of these SCVs. Going to drop that missile turret. Oh, is he going to go through the back? He is going to go through the back, and Boxer decided to go through his front door, thinking that the army might actually chase. If he would have gone through the back door, I think In Control would have been a lot of trouble, but he is not in the clear quite yet. As Slayer's Boxer is going to give chase, he's going to stim up and go after this army. There is one DT in that army, but simply not enough ground units to be able to stop Wow, this. and look at the upgrades on Boxer. 2-1, almost a 3-2, completely annihilates this force. We see the scan picking off the DT. At this point, In-Control is going to do all that he can to morph in a Zealot Archon force, and what do we see? We don't only see a nuke, but we see two more Ghost Academies for Boxer in the bottom left. Yeah, it's going to be getting ready for that as he's got a lot of ghosts here in this composition. A ton of medevacs as well. So even if he decided to split them off, take them somewhere else uh, to do a drop, to put possibly a nuke in the back, he can do that and still not worry Gosh. about... That was pretty sweet. That right was pretty EMP sick. for the reveal. And they're now the loading up some units. And what we see now is Boxer playing it cautiously, playing it smart, saving up until he has that one nuke to unleash on that expansion. Looks like In Control is going to try to shoot at these ghosts to try to take them down, but they have enough energy for an EMP. Does Boxer have enough for a scan? Does he even notice? There's the scan, picks it off. Can he see up onto the high ground? There's the scan and the nuke. Uh oh, it's going to have to move that away. We do see all the units coming around the side, DT in the back as well. And here uh -oh. Kali comes up the front. The probes are going to be pulled away. It's going to immediately go after the Nexus as well. There it is. Only a couple of kills right there, if any at all. And we've got drops going on in the back. And there the it is. Game. GG. Boxer dismantles that place start to finish. And it all started with that slightly early greediness from in control. Slacking on the gateways and trying to get the observer and the forge up so early and Boxer punish it with the first push, followed up with the drop play, followed up with the attack at the front and kept expanding, kept upgrading. And it was just too, too difficult for in control to catch up. And there he is, Slayer's Boxer, doing some <laughs> dance moves, has been practicing that all weekend long, Marcus. <laughs> that was, uh, that's a tough one. It takes a lot of coordination. And as you saw in that last game, coordination was king. Oh, uh, yes. He had uh, the double drops going on. They had good ghost management, was even eliminating those cloaked units by using EMPs. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he had just so many medevacs that he had basically zombie units because they were never going to die. They were the, the living dead. They, and it, I, I mean, at that point, that is just a great example of how devastating this player actually is. And Boxer is just amazing. Uh, it's pr really an honor to just be able to sit up here and watch him play. So congratulations. Another solid win for Slayer's Boxer. And we're going to take a listen as to what Boxer thought about that last match with an interview with JP up on the main stage right after this on Day 9. And I'm DJ Wheat. Don't go away. More action coming at you from MLG Anaheim Day 2.